in such forms as offers and professional governments. Uh, are we any pretty churches or would be a suitable alternative that it wouldn't cost you between three and five hundred pounds? Well, also, it's not using his microphone, so we can't hear what he's saying as well. So. Okay.
Thanks, Jeff. Yes, this is an, an ideal spot. But my concern is, that, and I've talked to the financial office about this, is the 100 yard uh, drive off the, off the road off Sparks Lane. And I think we need, if we, if we okay this, and I would suggest we do, but we, we, that um, driveway is very narrow. It can only accommodate one car just going either way. Um, we need somebody stationed at each end, I would suggest. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Yeah, we are concerned about it ourselves, Chair, and we say we need to keep in the situation under observation uh, whether we can afford to have people for 16 hours at either end. Uh, I think feel is a bit of a good point, but uh, we'll certainly be keeping it under review. And um, if need to be, we have to come up with some traffic management system that, uh, that doesn't appear to be a viable alternative within the coding district. So it's a bit of a. Uh, uh, I mean, here in this point, it's a kind of fun place for the demand. It's that far. Okay, thanks, David. Chancellor Edward. Yes, yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm glad to. 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 Really, <coughs> um, it, I, I was just wondering now, David, is it going to be possible? I don't know how the recreation centre is managed or done and who, who actually does it, but would it be possible to train some volunteers to uh, do a traffic management thing and perhaps just increase the fee slightly? Uh, the recreation centre, I believe, is run by volunteers, and I can ask. Okay. Uh, I was going to speak on this because that's what Mike said. I'm going to be here as well. And it says, we discussed this in great depth the last meeting we had just before the general election. It can be dangerous. And we do need to do something about the hump at the end. <coughs> I know you said you're going to look at it and keep it under review, but that's not good enough for it because at the end of the day, someone gets knocked down when we down that lane, especially in the. Is there any lighting down there now, Mike? Like? Because it'll be a dark lane if there isn't. This is a dark lane and, and someone could get knocked down at night, so we do need, we can't have it under review. We need, as a responsible council, if we're going to use that premises to do something about it before we have the election. I think you're right. Chair, can I just go? I, I fully agree with Andrew there. Um, if we are going to use this, and it is an idea, I think it's got to be man. I'll find out about the light. I can't, I do the leaflets down there, um, but I've got to do the leaflets at night. <laughs> it's too dark. Oh, it's too dark. <laughs> it's too dark. <laughs> and a lot of people after work go to bows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a lot of time. I, I attended a 50, 60 year old <coughs> party there a couple of years ago, and I found it particularly difficult. And I think lighting and just the turning space was particularly <coughs> difficult. You really have to stop ordinary traffic going in, you have to restrict traffic. I would thought to disabled type people only. That's, that's another excellent point there. It is a small car park, and at the busiest time, which I think is when people finish work, that car park could be full. So I think it's absolutely imperative that after dark, um, and it is dark, don't forget, when, when it opens at the same point, it? but when it gets dark, it's imperative that that car park is manned and people are stopped. <coughs> Can you, um, you take the report then, David, on The chair of the should have on board as to whether we could put people there with power to stop vehicles going down there without just getting right at it. I don't know, perhaps we'd have to take some advice from the government to exactly what our powers would be in that situation. Well, can I transfer the board? Sorry, just check. Given the comments that Nancy have made, I mean, perhaps, perhaps um, I'd like to register you to go back to a thing called the Recreation Centre and, and discuss the issues that we've raised and, and perhaps come back, even if it means a special meeting for ourselves, just to debate this one issue um, with regard to um, the safety of the public, because ultimately, as a licensing committee, that's what we're here for. We're supposed to be responsible. Exactly. And, and so, you know, when it comes down to it, given the concerns, I mean, I don't know the buildings, um, I don't know the spark at all. So, it, it, it does worry me uh, that if we 
made the recommendation um, even though it's a nice cheap press compared to the other one. Um, <coughs> the, the members have concerns about this and I, I would ask for this item to be deferred even if it's only briefly while further discussions um, take place. You've got a meeting in January, Chair, so there would be time, in fact, I think January would be the last opportunity, otherwise we well, would have a board institution. As the Chair, as the chair I can call a special meeting. As soon as you can have every board, I can call a special meeting. I think the board has gone to that stew, so I've got it. Our committee is the licensing, rather than saying you need to go to the basis of what's possible. Okay. And the next one. The first. Set out in the appendices 
So any questions with regard to the impact of the fares, I would suggest we direct to Margaret. But obviously the individuals are here this evening in the first instance, Chair. So, do you want to listen to these supporters persons first? Yes. So, who's for the fairness? For? Derek, speak with you. I'm just telling you, yeah, I'm not having everybody speaking, I'm having spokespersons for, and then I'm a spokesperson against. Derek Collins, you might be reading. Yeah, just a, a fairly quick. Well, you just, just my answer, he's just handing out some of the things here. Okay, okay. Can we just go ahead? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I suppose we have to be seen on it this evening. Can we have a copy of that so we can look at it as well? Yes, fine. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, we understand that there are people who say 
not very reasonable. I'm there at the airport for two years. But I, I, I will say for anybody who is new to the committee, it is a really contentious issue. And uh, we've got always got to keep one eye on the driver's eye. We are so stuck in the water. But they spot once again, they spell us higher as well. But the ratio of higher is, is three pound thirty for Mr. Bush. You know, Mr. Bush, you know, speak of that. Okay. Come to the block. Yeah, Chair, I'm, uh, Derek, I'm a bit disappointed that you, you're actually speaking to Unite through the independent um, driver's submission. Mm -hmm. Now we throw the fourth option towards us. I don't think that's helpful mm -hmm. when it comes down to the decision we're making, which the recommendation is that we go out of consultation on the three options. And now we throw the fourth one, which hasn't been worked out, it's not been front of members. And it's just been presented to us verbally right now. But, and I don't think that's helpful, Derek. Uh, I, I, I agree with you, Steve, but uh, I don't it's, not, it's not been. It is. It may be for the. Uh, it may be for but it's more of a compromise. Because one of the things that's. I, I, I'll probably leave it to this, but one of the things about the having, not having an increase for so long. Is that meters have got to be altered because we're all calendar controlled. You know, the calendar has, has relapsed, so everybody will have to get the meters of any which which was 24 pounds. But I, I, I take what I've got you on, on board, Steve. It's just the fact, look, looking at the, uh, looking at the, uh, look, looking at the table on, on journeys one, two, three, or four miles, it just gives everybody something. And it, it is a compromise, and that's right. At the end of the day, it has got to be a compromise because it is such, it is so contentious. Because I'll, I'll tell you now, if, if you go for three fifty, uh, you will have a meeting amongst, uh, uh, certainly amongst them. You'll have to have a meeting, and, and, you, and you, just won't, you just won't do it. Okay. So, you, so we have people not on the three fifty, but some still on the two eighty. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jim. I think I should come back. Okay. Now we'll have. Um, at this point, Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Scott, who do you represent? Well, I've asked the competition out and I won't say I represent them, but I've just got a look at the back up. Well, to be fair, one of the things is, as a driver and loads of drivers, we all work a hell of a lot of hours, anything between 60 to 80 hour weeks. I don't think it's healthy personally. No, we know that. We know that. We work that amount of hours. So, obviously, I'd like some sort of uh, increase to, like, help hopefully, like, lessen the hours. Try to lessen the hours. Because if I was only to do, like, say, a 40 hour week, after overheads and stuff like that, I wouldn't even be earning the minimum wage. It's, uh, and there's weeks when your vehicle will cost money to repair and stuff like that. So if you just take that out of the equation and your weekly earnings again, you'd be on something ridiculous like four pounds, four or five pounds now. Well, the straps out there can wear the tax credits to top their wages up with this.
flash of my opinion. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Scott? I would like to come to you, Chair. Um, on that, sorry. Um, it, it's, it, you say you've had a discussion with, with your customers that getting the taxi. And what's their, their concern over this? So, not so much as discussion, just people who are getting your, your taxi at the Christmas time and the, um, the first door, and, and the few that do get in. I mean, I'm not saying you don't sit there all night, you can obviously get a few because people don't want more, but compared to a normal day, you are sitting around a lot, and people don't like paying the bill for it. It's fact, we hate it. Yeah. Well, people would, people would. I honestly believe, and this is my opinion, I can't speak for everyone, but I think, mean, if you just had a normal, like, I want to be raised for that Christmas period, people in the country would be happy it's Christmas time. And I, I honestly believe they'd give you the tip anyway. Do you know, so you don't need to charge these rates, you just need to have a a reasonable basis. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep, yes. that's fine. Any no other questions? Okay. No, any questions discussed? No? Thank you. Thank you. A matter of law, really, uh, Chair, just, just to explain to uh, Mr. Scott and, and, and all, I mean, I'm sure drivers are aware that um, they do not have to charge the, that is the maximum fare, when the fare is set, that is the maximum fare that you can charge, you can charge less than what is on the meter. You can't charge more, but you can charge less. Yeah, fair I understand that, and what I will say to that is, I mean, I drive a happy cab, I uh, and that's it. So I rely on shoppers, the roads and the ranks, people flying down. I don't work on any system. It's just me and the cab. So I can only charge what is on the meter kind of thing. I mean, I'm not the work for a system where the rates are different. And if, I'm not sure, I don't think, I, I wouldn't be doing other happy cab drivers any favours if people got in and I'd turn around and say, well, I'll take it for a, know, say two pound or whatever it costs. You know, people talk, and you're not know, doing anyone in the industry any favours because people say, well, I'm not this driver with this and this driver. And they're only confused enough. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand the practicalities. I was just putting that up. But what oh, he sorry. says is yeah. that, you know, um, well, how, just... how, how, could I, how could I do that then? Would, would it put me strong then say, okay, it's just myself, I'm not too bad. How would you do it? Well, you, 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 can, you can set out um, within that whether, I mean, you'd have to obviously do it in a way that was understandable so that, and, and what was reasonable for yourself. So if you said to them, um, look, you'll see a, a charge on the meter, I charge a pound less than whatever's on the meter, or I charge, it, it, they'll come up, because it's a calendar control, it'll come up at X number for Christmas, but I don't charge the double fare for Christmas. You'll only pay the single fare with me. You can do that, that's a matter for you, but you cannot charge above what comes up on your meter. Yeah, okay, thank you. If you say that, well, that would open a can of worms if I started with price. I, I, would, I wouldn't be doing people in the street any that even by doing that. I, I, I understand the practicalities of it, I'm just, I'm just setting yeah. it out so that you understand oh, yeah, okay, what, what you want, want to do. Um, yeah, fair enough. Thank you. So, what's causing me is a confusion when in one hand you ask it to do something. And the other hand, you say you don't want to do it. You don't want to just do all the other drives. So you're leaving a bit of confusion there. I think the public is confused anyway, because you've got a lot of drivers who work in the same systems. So when the flag caps down, or they get, they're asking for caps, they turn up, and they get charged with the days anyway. So probably not the way they are. It is confusing anyway. So my proposal, which is only three, to make it nice and simple. And also, I don't think I'm not much data in the private tire sector. They're only about 20 pay under. <coughs> and, you know, the mind being changed the yard is just much more on the shorter distances. I'm trying to help them out with Christmas rates and stuff like that, so. Okay. Yeah. You're debating now. You don't want yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not certain whether or not there is uh, any drive here supporting a no increase. Is that chapter yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And then you come and speak again. Yeah. No, 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 no,
Mine was related to the first one. Who's going to speak? Who's going to represent the Northern Ireland? You are. My name is David Rothbitsky and um, I'm, I'm representing the, the no votes. Um, I've also had a petition done um, with 40 or just under 40 signatures on the no to any increase at all. Um, it, we don't have figures, we, don't, we just put it down to general common sense. And the common sense is if we put the fares up, people aren't going to get into our hackneys, they're going to wait longer to privatise. Right? We don't want that. We want to keep the fares the way they are at £2.80. Christmas is coming. We want the few bombs. We've worked hard for what we've got. We've managed to get through the last few years of scraping. And yet, we're not where we want to be. But if we increase them fares in any way, <coughs> it's going to take away the people who are going to use our hackneys. Who are you speaking for? I'm speaking for the petition that was handed in on the 17th of this month by the taxi drivers who do not want a, a, a tariff increase. Also, it's also been signed by members of Unite, um, who I've just listened to have put in a, a block vote. Um, and to me, if, if members haven't been balloted correctly for the vote, it shouldn't even be considered on the table here today. So, can I ask you then, are you Represent, you're a member of the union. I'm not a member of the union. And, and where do you work from? What day can I do this? Part? I work from day to day. So, right, okay. Thank you very much. That's all I've got to say on the matter. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Say, so, yeah, raise your hand. Uh, can I comment on that, please? No, I'm just. The, the guy there raised his hand. Oh, where, sorry. Yeah, where do you work from? Back then, I'm watching. And Gary, who are you going to speak for? I just wanted to clarify to Councillor Nidlock the concerns he had earlier on if I can. Okay. So uh, the most... Yeah, come on. Go on, Deb. Where do you speak? Thank well, you. In all, all fairness, sir. Go on, go on. Just to clarify the matter, I'm, I'm on the, uh, the yes side of wanting an increase with the increase that Derek has mentioned. Why this confusion on it? Initially, when we get these figures from the PCO, it's published in January every year. So between January and April, we have to collate those figures and come up with a figure of what we're going to go for, which Derek has explained. It was reduced in the yardage to 490 yards. However, since then, um, for obvious reasons, we've been hit with the cost of a medical, a three-year badge, and in many cases paying us twice for your CRB. Now speaking personally, this comes out to just under four hundred pounds for me in February. I'll have to renew the CRB, even though it's only one year old, because licensing insists I have a new one. Pay for a medical, which is £154, and pay for a three-year badge. The reason why Derek has recalculated the figures is because that small increase that we initially were going to request doesn't even cover the increased cost we've been hit with this year. So if we keep to 20 pence on every job, it goes some way. It still doesn't cover it, it still falls far short. It has been four years since we've had an increase. Um, the cost of living increases all the time. In that time, there's a driver put the buses up, I think, four or five times. So we're still relatively competitive. And I don't believe, as Derek said, 20 pence will break the bank. And it's all like people behind me just saying they don't want any increase and they're representing members. I'd like to ask this committee to consider asking them how many of those members are on private hand systems that don't even use the meter. They run on satellite rates, which is 50 pence more than ours. They run on double fares when it suits them. And more of the incidents of people being complaining as we go up being charged fair and a half for more than five people. When that's put in order, they can object until then. I don't even pay that. Okay? I just wanted to clarify that. I'm going to take the gentleman with the glasses on there and keep drawing the down. Well, uh, people can't charge what they want, um, and as I say, uh, as um, referred to before, obviously in terms of a happy carriage, it will have a meter, it will have a fare there, 
as indicated, some hackneys do operate from prime to higher, and they will have a separate fare tariff um, that they can apply that is not regulated by ourselves here at uh, licensing. Council Soldier, and then Council Bolt. Yeah. Just for a matter of clarity, Chair, and um, as you know, I, worked, I served on MERS travel for many years. MERS and travel do not set fares. It's done by the buses. Well, that's what I meant, John. Sorry, I got that wrong. Okay, that's just for clarity. Yeah, Council Thank you. Thank you, Chair. It, it's just a situation, I agree with uh, Steve, that you presented a fourth one tonight. Surely you could have presented it yesterday or the day before, which would have given us a bit of paper to, to glance at. You, you're suddenly thrown at it. And, and we, we've got to make a decision. I, I, I did say before, it, it, it was the last time. And, and Sonny said, well, whatever you say, you produced it today. Surely you could have produced it yesterday or the day before to, to give us time to look at it. Thank you, sir. And what's your name? Tony, Tony Collier. And who do you represent? Well, we self represent. Yourself? Yeah. Do you remember the union? I'm not a member of the union. I have signed the petition from, uh, from earlier about no increase. That was the easiest one I could go for. Because I haven't got anything myself, so to speak. I have learned a petition out myself, but I prefer the no increase. But what I actually feel. Um, is actually dropping it to 220 and dropping the yardage to 200 yards. Cut a long story short, and then on the drop, sorry, on the sorry, on the track one, uh, 220 to 250 yards, okay, and then every subsequent 225 yards is 20 pounds. So um, you're talking about. Um, this minimal, uh, as um, someone mentioned earlier, the minimum we can do is 20 pence. It's actually not really because we're dropping it down. Um, by my working out, uh, if we go to round of three miles, you'll gain an extra 20 p that way. Okay? It's a longer distance to gain that 20 pence, and the shorter distances are cheaper. I think this is the way we've got to go. One of the reasons for that is the amount of times that the passenger gets in, mainly on track two where there's three pound thirty, um, and they're on the edge of the seats. They say three pound thirty. That's a little expensive, isn't it, driver? What, what's that all about? On the edge of the seats, watching the meter all the way through the journey. And I feel that if it was cheaper, and by the way, private are more expensive for them. Private side of three pound eighty, we're only three pound thirty. But they don't see that in private side vehicle because there's no meter. So what I'm saying is, when they get in, they they, they see that they're on the edge of the seat, they're on edge. You don't enjoy the journey. They're in a closed shop. You can't speak to them. You can't ask them out of the night spin, Blah blah blah. And you don't really have any 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 feedback from them, and you won't get a tip. And I feel uh, that if we do drop it down, it looks we're not kid kidding them. It looks cheaper because the women public have this modern misconception that we're more expensive. Oh, we're actually not. We're not that more expensive at all. Now, get on to track two. Start at 270 uh, for 200 yards, and every subsequent 200 yards will be 20 pence. So at 2.84 miles, you'd gain 20 pence. I think that is, sounds a lot better. To the will public, so to speak, get this modern misconception out of the way. Um, that they see it being cheaper to start with. I don't see any problem with that. Liverpool start cheap, 